Uh, speaking of need to know, um, this is a, uh, a topic that people probably are not going to want to hear about. Um, so in the past month or so, I don't know, have you seen a lot about the bird flu? You no, haven't? I haven't heard anything about it at all. Travis, have you heard about it? Uh-huh. Yeah, I have. Okay. All right. So I'm not the only one. All right. So in the past month, I've seen a lot of stuff in news articles and social media talking about, about bird flu. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I've heard of bird flu before. I mean, it's not, it's not yeah. new. I remember that was popular whenever I was like in middle school. <laughs> it's popular. Bird flu is coming back. Yeah. It was so like when George Bush was the president. Yeah, so, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that. So, yeah, I kept seeing these articles, and at first I was just, like, skipping past them because, I, I mean, I feel like I still have pandemic fatigue. Like, just the thought of, like, another pandemic coming, I just can't take it. Like, the thought of, like, lockdowns and masking and distancing, like, I'm out. I just, yeah. and so, like, when I kept seeing these articles, like, no, not again. I can't take another pandemic. But eventually I was like, okay, well, you know, I really have this, like, belief that like knowledge is power. It's like, okay, I'm gonna like dive into this and see why are people even talking about bird flu right now? Do you know, do you guys know anything about bird flu? No, not really. Mm, I don't know a lot about it. No, I know, um, I, I, I think I had heard that there was some cases, uh, there was a case at least in Texas. Wasn't that's it? true, Travis. Yeah, right. yeah, look at you, man. You're, you're on the ball. Yeah, all right. Sure. All right. Well, I'm going to get you guys up to speed on bird flu so you can press all your friends all right, right tonight on. at the bars or wherever it is you might be going. Let's do it. <laughs> Okay, so, uh, all right, so unlike COVID, which the very first, you know, COVID-19 case was in 2019, that's why it's COVID-19, yeah. bird flu's been around for decades. Yeah. Um, they've, been, uh, they've, they've been documenting uh, cases in, in humans for over 30 years. But un the, the one big difference between COVID and bird flu, so COVID infected like close to a billion people in four years. Mm -hmm. Bird flu in over 30 years has infected less than a thousand. Yeah. So that's good, right? I mean, if we're talking about like a new virus, it's it's been around for a long time and it's it's not really infected a lot of people. So that brings up the question is, you know, why why are humans not getting this this virus? Yeah. So so I kind of dug into this. So so H5N1 binds to a certain type of receptor that is very very prevalent in birds and and some some animals, but it's just not really prevalent in humans. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like the uh, same thing with the COVID. It bound to this specific receptor in like the airway tract. The one that the bird flu binds to, we don't really have. Okay. I mean, some people have it. It is, it, it can be in there, but in general, we have very low numbers of these receptors. So that's the first thing. The second thing is that the human immune system is very, very protective against the, the viral replication of bird flu and protective against it spreading from cell to cell. Okay. And so I didn't like go in like so deep a dive to go into the, the, the molecular biology of it. Yeah. It just says that our immune system has certain protections against the replication process. Um, Maybe it's uh, learned. I don't know. It's, I, I, I probably should have looked it up, but like, you know, you can get really deep into that stuff and it's just like, okay, most people, they're just like, okay, it doesn't, <laughs> they just want to know. It doesn't do what it, yeah, yeah, it's it, not good at its job. It's not <laughs> good at it, right? That's all they want to know. Um, so uh, those two things, the fact that our, that we don't have the receptor specific for it to bind and get into us, and the fact that our immune system actually is pretty good at, at preventing it from, from replicating is, is a really good reason why in over 30 years there's been less than 1,000 cases. Another big important thing uh, that's good for humans when it comes to bird flu or H5N1 is that it's almost always a dead-end infection. Have you heard that term, dead-end infections? No. All right. So a dead in infection means that it's very, very unlikely that if you get a certain infection, you're going to pass it to somebody. Okay. So like the complete opposite of that would be something like measles or COVID so where... it's not contagious from human to human? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And so there's, a, there's actually a very specific reason for that. The um, H5N1 viral particles do not build up in respiratory secretions. Okay. That's the, the big thing with like the common cold and regular influenza and, and coronavirus like the viral particles build up in your saliva. And, mm -hmm. and so when you cough and you sneeze, or even like when I'm talking here, you know, there could potentially be viral particles mm -hmm. coming at you. Um, for whatever reason, H5N1 does not build up in the respiratory secretions. And so that's the biggest reason that in, in humans, it's kind of a dead end, um, a dead end infection. Unlike animals that are always kind of touching each other, you know, they're very commonly either eating from the same thing or uh, you know, like having close contact with each other and that's how they, they pass it. Mm -hmm. um, so it seems that, you know, when people do get this infection, it, they're not getting it from 
you know, like if you're you come down with bird flu, you didn't get it from, from me or your, yeah, right. You got it from an animal, Yeah. you know? And so that, so then that always brings up the next question is how prevalent is this, you know, in the United States? Like, you know, is there a lot of bird flu around? Yeah, who got the virus? Was it like a, like a bird keeper? So that's a great question. So uh, actually, um, worker? it was actually, and it, that kind of spoiler uh, we're going to talk about in a minute, but like it was actually um, two of them were dairy farmers. Because it's now spread to cows. Yeah. Um, so I, I, this is was kind of surprising when I was looking up looking up bird flu. I was like, oh, bird flu, you know, maybe some birds have it in the United States. So the CDC says that in wild birds, that bird flu is widespread in all 50 states. Like it's very, very prevalent. Mm -hmm. um, in poultry farms, there's sporadic outbreaks in 48 of 50 states. Oh, my goodness. It's pretty wild. And now there's there's an ongoing multi-state outbreak in dairy farms. The cows are getting it in ten different states. Mm. I know birds like to hang out on cows' back. Right, exactly. Yeah, that's how they're the animals are like passing it back and forth to each other. Um, so you know, so there's there's these widespread bird flu in wild birds. There's sporadic outbreaks in poultry farms, and then there's a current multi-state outbreak in dairy farms. This stuff is actually pretty prevalent. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's out there. Um, so Do the good they, news. Is there a vaccine? There is a vaccine actually. For animals? Uh, I don't know if they're giving it to animals. I know that there's a vaccine because I just saw that. I know there is one because my my mom was a nurse and I remember when it was like that first big like. Oh, so it's been around a while. Thing. I thought it was new because I saw that either the Netherlands or Norway or one of those little. Wasn't it called? I thought it was called H1N1, back in the day. There is an H1N1. That was the first, that was the one my mom was always talking about. Okay, so this is H5N1. Yeah. That's the current one. Yeah. I guess, is H1N1 bird flu also? I thought it was. Is it? Charles? I don't know. I thought H1N1 was something else. Maybe I'm wrong. Isn't that know. swine flu? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. My mom, there was always, she was always talking about some virus yeah, or it's swine some flu. type of. Swine flu. Okay. okay. Swine. Hey, that's another, <laughs> that was totally Did, did I tell you guys the story about how, you know swine flu and, originated in Mexico. No. Mm -mm. Yeah, so it originated in Mexico, or at least one of the big outbreaks did. So back when my wife and I didn't have any money, during the middle of swine flu, like we took a vacation to Mexico. You did tell me about whenever you were younger, you went to, to Mexico, like the, but I don't think you told me why. Yeah, we, well, because it was the middle of the swine flu. Like, they, I mean, it was caught, there was like zero people on the plane. Like, okay. It was like empty, and like the resorts were at 5% occupancy. It was awesome. We got the whole trip for like nothing. Nice. And we did get swine flu. Nice. And Always everyone good. thought we were mad. Like, our friends just thought we were bonkers. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway. Uh, okay, so. Wow, I lost my train of thought. H5. Oh, so the good news. All right, so, there, <laughs> so there's a lot of swine. Uh, there's a lot of, not swine. There's a lot of bird flu in the United States. It's in wild birds. It's in, um, like, poultry farms. It's starting to get into other animals. Like, people were talking about foxes getting it, of course, dairy cows. So with all these animals getting it, there's only been four documented cases of humans in the United States. And two of them only had um, conjunctivitis. It didn't even get into the respiratory system. Huh. Yeah. It was so, in their eyes? Yeah, it was in their eyes, yeah. They probably got splashed with, like, raw milk at the dairy farm or something. Gross. Yeah, that's pretty gross, right? Um, <laughs> and so what's interesting is of, of those four people, uh, all of them – made a full recovery and none of them had any type of serious <coughs> symptoms. And so here's the interesting part on bird flu. So when I was looking up the mortality rate for humans, like the stated mortality rate says 50%. Like that's crazy high. I mean, crazy, crazy high. Is it just because like people, they're like, oh, I don't know what you have. I think you're 100% you're right. I think that the reason that the mortality rate is stated to be so high is that the only people getting tested are people that are like really, really, really sick and they're not sure what's wrong with them. Yeah. So probably there's way, way more than 1,000 people that have been infected in the world. And you know, I think a lot of people, just like these people in the United States who had very mild symptoms, just had very mild symptoms and they never you know, went and did anything. So I, I think it probably is actually more prevalent than yeah. and then honestly if it's people that mainly work with animals you have to think about they probably if they take off from work they probably it's like that's detrimental yeah. to them like they're not taking off work yeah they're, just, they're, they're not going to the or doctor. they're like and yeah. it sounds like i mean most people that work with animals are dudes and yeah. dudes don't like going to the doctor right 
Well, and also I too, <laughs> a lot of the a lot of the play. I looked at like where the deaths occurred. I mean, a lot of it's like third world country as well. Yeah. And, and so. They don't have access. To the yeah, they don't have access to care, you know, and so. Um, I think that 50% mortality rate, because I, I was like, this can't be right. There's no way that this is 50%. I mean, that's like Ebola levels. Yeah. You know, that's like insane. Like, if there was a pandemic with a 50% mortality rate. What's the mortality rate for the animals? Uh, that's a great question. I'm not 100% sure. I think, I think it's fairly high in birds, but not in mammals. Okay. Uh, that's a good question, sir. I didn't actually look at that. I feel like if they, I'm going to look that up. I feel like they, don't they vaccinate animals, like farm they, animals? Yeah, but I don't, do they vaccinate them for bird flu? I, I feel don't like think that's so. something they should if it's like. I don't know the If answer. that's where it's coming from. I'm not sure. Maybe it's they It's kind of hard to vaccinate a wild bird, but. Yeah, farms, bird flu can't, but. Um, farms with chickens like cows. and cows and your horses and all yeah, that's a things. good question i don't i don't know the answer to that i will look that up if they're vaccinated. i'll look up what is the mortality rate of bird flu and birds and i'll look up are animals getting vaccinated for bird flu yeah i don't think they are to be honest i mean I'm, i mean our dogs i haven't i've never gotten a vaccine for my dog for it for bird flu yeah no no yeah i'm saying it's like, like rabies it's like and for farm animals though yeah I don't, i'm not sure that's a great question i know a vaccine exists because they were talking about countries buying it mm. um yeah, good one. I'll have to, and also I'm curious what the mortality rate is in the birds. I mean, there's still birds out there, so obviously, like, the birds aren't all dying. <laughs> I mean, I see birds. We but have zombie birds. Yeah, that would be bad. Uh, but yeah, I think that that high mortality rate that's stated is just due to the fact that they're, you know, they're only counting, like, the really sick people, like, the mm -hmm. worst cases, and then it's also third world countries. So, how do you avoid bird flu? I mean, this is pretty easy. Don't mess with wild birds. I mean, it's a direct contact thing with humans. It's not like, you know, it's not like secretions or coughs or sneezes. Like you have to you grab the bird and you hold it and then you rub your face. Like, so, you know, avoid wild birds, you know, sick birds, also, you know, farm animals that are sick. Yeah. Um, I mean, it should be pretty easy. And also avoiding raw milk because apparently it can, it can get past in, in the milk. It's in the, um, it viral sheds into the milk. So I guess the final question that, you know, that needs to be answered is, you know, do you need to be worried about bird flu? Like, is this the next thing? No, nah, I mean, like in order for bird flu to be a problem for humans, it would have to go through some serious mutations Yeah. Um, because there's a lot of things that make humans not as susceptible to it. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it is technically possible that it could mutate and that could be a problem. But is it likely that all of those things are going to mutate? No. I mean, I think if it mutated once and then suddenly, OK, well, maybe it still doesn't build up in secretions, but now it, it, it can enter through another receptor on humans. Okay, it's like, whoa, that thing's changing. We need to be a little bit more, but it still has a thing where it's not easily transmissible because mm -hmm. it, it doesn't build up in the secretion. So, you know, if it mutated one thing, you know, it might be a little bit more, but there's a lot of things about it that, that make don't it- work. That make it don't work with humans, yeah. yeah. So, so anyway, but it's good to know about it, right? Because now, yeah. now when you see these articles, you're like, oh, okay. All right, so I, I think I'll recap this one. This is a pretty interesting topic. So today on Nip Talk, we were talking about bird flu, H5N1, because I've seen a lot of articles about it lately. And of course, you know how the media is. Sometimes they want to you know, shock people or scare people. Uh, so I did a pretty deep dive on bird flu. I have to say I wasn't 100% familiar with it. So bird flu is very prevalent in the United States, mostly in wild birds. There are some outbreaks in poultry farms, and there are some outbreaks in actually dairy farms. But the good thing about bird flu for humans is that we have some very protective factors about us that make it very hard for us to get bird flu. The receptors that it binds to, we typically don't have. Also, our body is very good at preventing replication. And also, bird flu doesn't build up in secretions, which is the way humans transmit lots of illnesses. And so in humans, it tends to be a dead end infection, meaning that if a human gets it, that's usually where it ends. So, um, yeah, I don't think that we need at this point to get really super scared about bird flu. Uh, it would have to go through some serious mutations to be, you know, very potentially harmful to humans. Uh, it does have a pretty high mortality rate as stated in humans when they get it. But I think some of that is that they're only counting the most serious cases because the four documented cases we've had in the United States, everybody fully recovered with only minimal symptoms. So I think it's good to know about bird flu, but should we be afraid of it at this point? I don't think we need to be. Nope. No. Sarah's just like, no, I'm no. not going to be afraid of bird flu.